Not of my own choice. Uh, sorry about it, not knowing if it was going to register. Well, uh, the worry was not that, because I was being paid. The worry was, uh, are we on the right track? You know, you must get your audience reaction. And I think this might be of interest to your listeners. Incidentally, this will be a three-hour program. As you can see, I'm, I'm a very talkative person. But, uh, and I, uh, I'm not much of an analyst, but I think the children, they run the house, you know, in television and what they want to see. And even though it was an adult show, they liked it. And so the, the uh, adults watched it. And uh, we just went on from went there. On from there. Yeah. How did it appear to the children? Because the, one of the essential parts of the plot is that it constantly makes a mock of authority. That's true. That is my milieu in all comedy. I don't think you're too conversant with my career in America as far as musical comedies. Uh, one of them would be a top of them and high button shoes. Uh, I, 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 I don't want to become presumptuous and say I know my comedy. It was instinctive. I've come up the hard way. I've done everything. Everything that's short of getting arrested doing it, you know? But uh, I guess if I were to analyze it, I call a tall man shorty. You know what I mean? I always go, I'm a scam. But when you when you do this in the uniform of the American Army, did it ever get you into any problems? Everybody thought of that. Except now you must understand that our army life is different than yours. We have enlistees and draftees. Well, that's similar, isn't it? Well, perhaps now it would be rather difficult to get any humor out of the situation in the American Army, do you think? Uh, no. You no. don't think it would be colored? Uh, you know, well, it's, it's, a, it's a little grim, of course, now, what's going on in Vietnam and all that. But no, there's humor in, in the darndest thing. My biggest kick of all is you either believe this or not, it doesn't matter, it's just the truth. I am a confirmed since uh, the age of nine, I've been in show business that early. I am a tremendous anglophile, I love anything British, and if you knew me well, especially these days, uh, I'm not covering your favor, it's the truth. I just love everything British. I think it's gayer than Paris, I think the food is better. I love the people. You have a mannerism perhaps you're not aware of. Uh, I can best explain it this way. I've been in many Broadway shows, which I'm properly good in. And an Englishman would come backstage, so Lance Olivier, a friend of mine, would say. And he is, actually. He loved burlesque. When I was in the burlesque shows, he would come. And uh, an Englishman comes backstage and sees your show and says, you were jolly good. And he drops it at that, and that's fine. Then the American performer will come back and say, gee, I thought you were great in this show, I should thank you very much. I don't tell this to everybody. You really were great. I appreciate it, thank you. Look, I'm, you know, I've seen a lot of shows. I don't tell people. And it rides up with me telling them, go drop dead, you know. I think it's been, it's your very manner which made you survive your terrible time during the blitz. I'm, uh, I'm stuck on him. Now, I know it was tremendous interest in cricket, which is rather unusual for an American. How did it all begin? I'm a Lord Tavern, if you have time. <laughs> Would you get to hear about that? We have time. Uh, well, I came here, and uh, I did a personal appearance on the BBC, which paid for my whole trip, you know, the Bill Bill series. And there was a wonderful chap named Ronnie Waldman assigned to me to show me around. And I kept saying, Ronnie, I'd like to see cricket match. And he avoided me because he's a Lord Taverner and he loves cricket. And he was quite annoyed that the average American thinks it's a bloody dull game, you know. And he didn't want to dislike me. So he found excuses to avoid taking me. Until one day I nailed him with it. I said, here's the paper, they're at Lord. They're playing India. And if you don't take me, I'll go by myself. So he did. We were there, and there was a broadcasting booth above us, open window, and this chap was, I wish I could think of his name, 
he was broadcasting it in the typical British manner, you know. And I don't say this derogatorily, but it's pretty matter of fact. And typically British again, the best batsman on the Indian team had fractured two ribs. I think his name was Krishna. Unless I'm wrong. I'm taking a stab at his name. And typically British, the bowler was bowling away from his hurt rib. In America, the first ball thrown would be right at his rib, you know, at his weakness. But anyway, uh, I was watching him, quite interested in it. Now they took the cameras away, as you do here, you, you go to Ascot, cover all the things. And the uh, British broadcasters came back and sat with us for a moment. And in all truth, I could sense an anti-American aversion from him. He came, he got an American slang and he kind of a little dig. He said, what do you think about dull little games? And I said, the only thing dull about this game is you. And he thought that was rather rude. And he said, what do you mean? I said, is this a big match? He said, yes. I said, well, you've been broadcasting it like it's a tea party. I said, let me show you how an American broadcaster will start it. Kidding him, of course. He said, my God, he said, would you do it on the BBC? I said, sure. So he called the station, and they got the camera back. I guess they hooked it up there. And he said, uh, he announced, we have a famous sergeant major here who will now broadcast the cricket match and seen through the eyes of an American. Well, I did it like our American sports uh, our broadcasters do. I yelled at every move. Helena Deep, there's a good one! It's gone way to the wall. Well, we lost out of it. Looked in there. Fury! But they saw it was me, these elderly gentlemen. And I said, well, it's all right. Still, still, he's not. You know, it's all right. And they forget walking. It's a great man city to walk in. And around Piccadilly. <laughs> no, we know what they didn't mean to sneak that in. But shopping and everything. And I walk, and the cabbies, and the people on the street. I was a national hero for a half an hour. Jolly good! They would yell. First time I enjoyed the cricket on the telly. Very good, you know. So, uh, I'm back at my hotel, and a couple of days later, we were leaving and going back to America, and I do everything. I came on both Elizabeth, you know, on the boat, and, uh... You keep referring to something you call typically British. Can you define it? For instance, uh, there are staff here. Your audience knows that these things are not done out of the air. There's a staff of people here photographing them. Uh, in America, you know, Morgan, they would cross me all around. You know, and it's, hey, now wait a minute, this ain't gonna light so well. Can we get moved? That's a lousy door, you know? So, but these chaps came in here. That's what I call this. You're worthy of a film over here. Do you find work? I haven't finished my cricket story. Oh. How dare you? <laughs> After all, that's how you lost India. <laughs> well, anyway. <laughs> Uh, they, I got a call at the hotel, and he said, Mr. Silver, are you in your room? I said, well, I'm not in the lobby. He said, well, this is Lord Tavener, so and so and so and so. You've been made an honorary Lord Tavener. I don't know what he's talking about. I swear to you. I saw thank you. He says, we'll be over with the tie and the book. Will you be in your room? I said, yes. I came, and with an arm guard. First of all, the tie is not important. I mean, as far as value, I still have it home. I should have brought it with me. It's a lot of the tie. But it brought an autograph for Tavern, which makes you sign in as a lot of That's why the protection. It's in, there's no value you can set on this book. Because as I turned the pages back, I saw Field, Mon uh, Field Marshal Montgomery's name. I saw Churchill's name. Way, way back, I saw this really thing. These are all Lord Tavern. And I was honored to be in that book. That's why uh, it was God. That, that's the value. It's a real museum piece. And uh, in sports, sports is a great equalizer. You've been saying how much you like England and things English, things that are typically British. Will you 
tell me about the film test that you once made for Pride and Prejudice? Oh, you're a sneak. You did do some research. <laughs> Well, Pride and Prejudice, notwithstanding, you're now making a British film with a British cast and with a very particularly British sense of humour. However, playing an American. Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, I'm not too familiar with the Carry On series as I should be. I know how popular they are. But to my knowledge, there's not been an American in one. No. And uh, in, this, in this film, uh, somehow or other, we get involved in the Foreign Legion. And I'm an, an, an American sergeant, and I turned down in America uh, during the run of the Bill Gonsons. Every other week, we get a call from Molly with me to play a sergeant in a film, and there's no tears to me. You know, the lack of imagination. I've done that, you know, and, and sorry, tell me, tell me, see how British. Uh, but uh, this sergeant is different. He's, he, he's Bill Gonsons. Only in the Foreign Legion in the early 1900s. And uh, it's such a jolly group of people. I've met most of them. And if I could come up with some of the love already expressed, it's so delighted to have me that it startles me. Acting with a cast of British actors, does it tend to oh, no. less American? Or? Uh, well, I must watch, and the director must watch. I have a sieve for an ear, I'll pick up. Because of my my anglophilia that I told you about, I'll start talking like them if somebody doesn't watch me, and that would be no good. There would be no novelty to that, and so I must stay very American, as I am an American in the pictures you see. Do you find the way of working in films very different in England from what you I have no way of knowing, no. having never done one. I know in America it's you know they and to separately do it. If I had my druthers, which is an expression, I would be strictly on the stage. In the stage, I'm in command, and I'm jolly good at it. But uh, pictures, it's piece film. That doesn't go for dramatic pictures, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But comedy is very often restricted. I read the script, and if we did it verbatim in America, we'd all be in jail. You know, it's very spicy and delightfully so. Do I hear one or two lines? Yeah. I'd rather not. <laughs> no, but uh, I'm uh, like a racehorse at the gate. I'm full of apprehension. But I know the first day of Roland, so I've met the director. He's a delightful man and uh, so unlike a successful director, you know, in his manner. He's just a guy. Please fulfill it, it'll be fine. So, so, I hope you enjoy that film very much, and thank you. Well, I've enjoyed the courtesy you paid me, and it's an honor to be on your network. Thank you. Game and grow steady Saturday night. The champ is sharpening up. <laughs>